Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is a bunch of gamers. I'm here for our new game, The Realms of Pugmire. We have a different group, and this will be our Saturday game, and this will be our first recording for the week published to our YouTube and archive.org group. I'm going to just point around the table and introduce my players. Our players include Mike, Liam, Michael, and Thomas. We also have one more player, Christine. She's running a little late. Today is our episode zero, which is character creation. Uh, what I need from you guys, actually, is you can go through the character sheets. You're going to come up with your character together, how they know each other. I'd like your characters to know each other before we begin. I would like you to create, collectively, three NPCs that you all know and one NPC that you each individually know that I can use later on in the game as a point of contact for an adventure. Um, that's the basics of it. Uh, there are callings, which are your character classes, like D&D, &D, and your background. The game starts by asking you to come up with your calling. I'll give a brief uh, run-through of these callings, just so you have an idea of what you want to play. The callings include an artisan, which is kind of a mix between the wizard and the bard, because they have things that can cause inspiration. Uh, guardians, which are kind of a fighter, paladin, type character. Hunters are kind of the ranger style character. Ratters are basically the rogue archetype. Shepherds are clerics. And strays are barbarians. The dogs have different breeds, which will determine like what kind of dog you want to play. These uh, breeds are kind of a wide berth so that you can actually choose individual breeds, breed dog breeds, once you've chosen your game mechanic breed. Uh, these breeds include companions, which are the smaller dogs, so think like pugs, chihuahuas, things like that. Fetters, herders, which include like corgis, pointers, runners, which include like greyhounds, workers, and then mutts, which are just a blend, an amalgamation. And then finally, there are the backgrounds, which include acolytes, common folks, criminal, free dog, Merchant, Noble, Sage, and Soldier. So those are the basics. Once you uh, come up with your character class, be sure to, or calling I guess, you'll have some primary, they have a primary attribute or abilities, and you'll mark those on your character sheets. So, any questions? Alright. So we want to be balanced, I guess. Yeah. Uh, this game doesn't worry about that as much um, versus D and D, where you know you you do getting experience through exploring. You guys basically level up whenever I say you level up, so there's no real motivation to kill as much or loot as much as possible, which is nice. <laughs> Anybody right off the bat know what they want to be? I think I'm leaning towards guardian. A guardian, okay. Because I was leaning towards guardian as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guardians have two different paths of uh, of what they call tricks. Each class, breed, and background have these tricks, and the tricks sort of determine what you're good at. So there are different pathways, and you can actually customize the classes a little bit, so it's totally fine. So I mean, we could both be guardians and have completely different traits from each other. Yeah. yeah. Pugmire gives you preset ability scores. Unlike D&D, you're not going to be rolling for it. Okay. Hmm. So that everyone starts on equal footing. Okay, yeah, that's pretty easy to do. Okay. Or sounds so, easy to do. And then just a brief... Aside, Pugmire is a world where humanity's gone. Dogs have been, some dogs, some cats, lizards, rats, and other various animals have actually been elevated and continue to evolve. They have formed a society around the concept that there was a world before. This world before is typically called the Age of Man, or the Age of the Old Ones. Dogs specifically have a church dedicated to this, where they have their own tenants. Pugmire was built and... The king or the noble houses are determined by who grabs an ancient relic from the age before. Each noble house has a relic that they control. If a noble house loses its relic or that relic is destroyed, they lose their noble house status as well. And they have to find another one or steal another one. So that's, it. that's an important uh, thing to know. Pugmire was built out of a swamp and it was drained. And Pugmire includes... Another city, Houndington, as well. So there are various noble houses kind of competing for power in Pugmire. 
and their waterfront essentially is kind of the rough and tumble where people get uh, people of less repute basically gather, and that includes cats, rats, and various other species. Some dogs have come to taking have taken to calling this area the backyard, and that is because they heard in the age of man that is where old dogs used to go to the bathroom. So, but Pugmire is built on the concept of they have the society for Pugmire that is or the uh, the Royal Pioneers of Pugmire. The Royal Pioneers are a kingdom funded group of adventurers who go off up into the world and actually look for either ancient relics of man to bring back to noble houses or fight monsters that threaten some of the smaller villages that pay allegiance to Pugmire. So that could be a place that you start off with if you so choose. Oh, yeah, the, I, I noticed that. Um, oh, I missed that part. What were you going to say again? The Royal, uh, the Royal Society... The Pioneers. The Royal Pioneers, yes, of uh, Pugmire. They are charged with going out and finding relics, fighting monsters, and defending villages for the kingdom of Pugmire. Okay. And it might be, a, if you guys choose to do that, that could be a place that you start off. Yeah. And that could be your, something that helps tie you all together. And that might be a well of inspiration of where you have common NPCs or not. That's up to you. Okay. But yeah. that is an idea. If we're both uh, guardians, we could both have backgrounds. My The, the thing that... Uh, was off about my thought in the background was I thought that uh, my character at some point was a soldier, but it looks like the soldiers it's still more of a feudal. Yeah, uh, it's a feudal noble, thing. They do have they do have the police dogs, mm-hmm. which do guard the city. Yeah, or maybe something like a merchant caravan yeah. guard. Yeah, but. either is either is fine um, for your character's background, and you know you can also be silly with the names. All dogs. Typically, unless they're from a pariah or free dog fam- background, typically have a family name. And that family ma- name is usually like Husky, Bulldog, Hound, Pug, etc. And that may tie you to noble families or not, but there are, but not all families in Pugmire are noble either. Yeah. Might be Scottish. Be like Mac Terrier or. You could be, yes. Macaulay or. It would be like Scott Terrier. Yeah. <laughs> One was, uh, in a previous game, was Tiberius Huskington Esquire the Third. Ha. So. <laughs> so those are all examples of names. So. What do you have in mind? For calling? Currently, I don't know. Okay. There is no warlock in this game. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no cloud of daggers? There's no cloud of daggers, is it? <laughs> The spells are a little more limited because dog magical traditions don't line up necessarily with cat magical traditions. <laughs> Cats tend to pull from necromancy. Ah, shocking. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, my the, the notion that I was coming up with uh, this past week was being a merchant's son, but uh, my father uh, claimed that once in the past we had been noble before you know, some long ago war dispute caused us to lose that. And the thing, the conflict with the hounds jumped out at me. Okay. So maybe even possibly having hound background. The, a hound uh, background would be good, and you could say that he was one of the subfamilies of the hounds, and, or one of the noble ha- families that left with the hounds, not necessarily a hound themselves. Oh. And because the hounds came back to Pugmire, then there was the war with the monarchies. Yeah. And in that war, perhaps a rival house destroyed your artifact or stole your artifact. Okay. Reducing your house's status from noble to common. And the how long ago were the wars? With the, the war monarchies? with the uh, the monarchies was several decades ago. Okay. So okay. All, no living uh, dog truly remembers. Yeah. So grow up with a merchant. Uh, Mother would have died early on, so I would have spent a lot of time traveling with my father, going on trading expeditions, and on the way, picked up a few tricks. Not much formal education, but learned uh, how to fight from his guards, as well as learning how to wheel and deal and all that. Mm-hmm. And then from there, thinking with the aptitude of fighting, uh, my 
initial idea was joining the army and then witnessing how awful combat was compared to trade mm. and developing kind of a uh, uh, an opposition to that sort of thing. Yeah, like with the with the code, um, be loyal to those who are true is great. But then the the second one, just like the oh oh obey the master, would be mm-hmm. the part of the code I'd have the most issue with. Got it. For thinking most masters are probably not true and mm-hmm. more likely to be full of it. Gotcha. So then current motivations would be a trade and just making money, peaceful resolution. But also every time I go anywhere, there's somebody who's being kenneled or beaten or yeah. oppressed, and I wind up trying to help them out. The, uh, the 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 core personality ideas I had were from. Uh, have you read Illuminatus? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Hagbard Celine, who's basically uh, fr- cut from the same cloth as Lazarus Long. Okay, got it. So Lazarus Long is a, a Scottish merchant who always winds up neck deep in trouble and trying yep. to avoid it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I read those. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll probably go with the hunter. The hunter? Yeah. Okay. Hunter sounds good. So we've got two guardians, a hunter. You seem to be short, short the character sheet. I am not. Oh. I promised Christine she could play a cat. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, that... That, <laughs> that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my first notion. Ah, oh, I want a cat. But uh, maybe sometime after this we should do a monarchy's and mouth. Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, just running through games. A terrier could be a companion, though, right? I think so. A smaller terrier. Yeah. I don't see why not. Because I'm thinking I'm going to be a companion guardian rather than a uh, worker guardian. Mm. But, yeah, we can know each other through merchant's guards, trading, serving. Not serving in the same unit, because there Mm -hmm. hasn't been uh, warfare lately. Yeah, they still have a kind of a standing army, because, of course they do. Now. Because Pugmire's become kind of a mini-empire. Oh. Because they have several cities now. They're no longer a city-state. That was the one that looked cool, too, was Pirates of Pugmire. Yep, that's uh, that's in Kickstarter. I kickstarted it, too, so I'll get a PDF yeah. of that soon. Nice. Maybe let's be a payment and go with uh, Shepard. Yeah. Shepard. So I need some healing. <laughs> if he takes the magic uh, trick. So. Oh, I was going to ask. So with the two different paths for Guardians, yeah, uh, is it like you choose... Uh, uh, combat style trick. You choose. Or... It'll sh- it'll tell you which okay. what which of the two tricks you start off you pick at the start. Uh huh. And you'll just, just write that down. It's on the back of the character sheet. You'll notice tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll write down the trick and the age number yeah. and the level cap in Pugmire is ten. Oh. So. Okay. Not too, not too slow. Yeah. Also for the dueling combat style, it says uh, holding a single handed weapon with no other weapon. Mm-hmm. Can you do that with a shield? I, or you? I. I think I would have to look at look at yeah. it. Or like a buckler at least, because yeah, I kind of want to do a clay bag. So, uh, don't want to put specifically. You know. So, you were thinking of a companion? Yeah. Uh, okay, so just uh, for brief companion. Also, real quick, you two, those are your primary abilities. Mm-hmm. So mark that next to the... Uh, Strength. Okay. Did you mark yours already, Michael? Or no? For what? For uh, primary abilities? No, I did not. There they are right there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Alright. And we'll come back to uh, skills in a bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> you get uh, skills from the calling and the breed and the background, right? Uh, just the background and the calling, oh, I okay. believe. Looking at the. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, for the breeds, the strength focused one is the worker, and then the charisma focused one. Yeah, and but you, you chose companion. Yeah, but I mean, you could choose any. Each different breed just gives you a different bonus yeah. to a stat. So if you want, like, you could do um, what was it? Uh, uh, setter or something. There's one that gives you a constitution bonus, which mm-hmm. would also be useful. Uh, not setter. Shall do some companions. Feather. Feather. Bells, herders, pointers, runners, workers. So Fetter's the one with constitution. Huh? Yeah, and runner's the one with dexterity. And you write that under a uh, breed then? Or? Yeah. And then you can fudge like a specific dog breed. 
So breed is just the mechanical one, and then family is the specific kind of dog. Yeah, or just your, your description of your character. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that at the end, too. Uh, right. Well, so worry about the actual breed of the dog near the end is what you're suggesting? Or? No. You have it in your head right now. Just put that as your last name in the game. Hmm. Like Anderson Akbash or something like that. Akbash. It's a Turkish breed. So my car is QK. Huh. One with Beagle. Beagle. Unless it's McLeod, who actually looks like an Akbash, but he's not. He's <laughs> half. He's Auditorian mixed with Grey Pyrenees. That's uh, his no, breed. Okay. And they changed the uh, breed names a bit to make them sound like families. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Do like McTerry instead of McTerrier. You can do that, yeah. I'm fine. So I guess technically terriers are more pointers, but a lot of the fancy ones are more Yeah, the, 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 dogs so that's getting into the minutia. This this game and me do not care about. <laughs> and this one should be easy to edit because this is just white noise. Mm. Uh, which one did you pick again? Companion? Yeah, you chose the companion. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. If you're focusing more on the physical, you might want to choose a worker. Yeah, I chose a uh, feather. Feather. Or huh? is it Fettel? Fettel. Oh, Fettel. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was kind of confused on that. Fettel, like, yeah. Did I put Fetter and then this is Fettel? Yeah. No, Fettel. Yeah, that's what... No, it's good. Oh, you've already chosen your uh, your background, I see. I was poking, I was still, like, eh, this will be easy. We'll just mm-hmm. go whole hog with the whole stereotype. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Are you going to be like a uh, like a German, or a, what is this, the shag dogs, the shag herders or whatever? Uh, what is there's no Scottish gnome for you to kill. Huh? Scottish deer. There's what? There's no Maybe gnome for you to the, kill. Uh, like the, the big shaggy dog. Is that <sighs> no. The, uh, as, a, no. as an actual like shepherd, shepherding dog. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not uh, the same thing as... Uh, no, with, so, with something easy. Which is also a herder though. Just a collie. Yeah. Oh, you're a collie? Okay. Collie. Macaulay. Macaulay. So. And that's your last name. So, yeah. And you'll get to come up with your first name. We could all be uh, Scottish type dogs, just in the Oh, and uh, wasn't sure if you guys were aware, and just for sake of the screen too, regular dogs still exist in this world, because mm. some were not elevated like yours, so they evolved as just still regular dogs, so you kind of view them as what we view as apes, like right. distant relations. Yeah, there's a resemblance, but like, we got thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> And we can clearly think better than them. That's true. So, we'll get to that with the tricks. I just wanted to get everything major marked down, and then choose your ability scores first, and then start going through your tricks. Alright. Because that makes more sense, because then you'll actually have an ability score to compare to the tricks you're doing. Right. Though, yeah, I see that. I mean, if if you want specific tricks, that yeah. would influence how you... Yeah. Select your yeah, exactly. So if you want to look at certain tricks, mm-hmm. certainly. But uh, since you're already, you already know you're going for the charisma. Yeah. More charisma than strength, but still pretty strong. Mm-hmm. And he's going for strength, but still pretty good on charisma. Yeah, I think my dump stat is just going to be intelligent. Uh, that happens. <laughs> that depends too, actually, depending on how heavy of the armor you're wearing, because heavy armor doesn't necessarily imply uh, your dex mod goes in there anymore. Oh, uh, okay, so I could... Uh, you could, yeah. So you already did your background, and you did an acolyte. Uh, does anyone else need to do their background? Uh, no. No. What's your background? Because uh, I got family as Pyrenees. Yeah. I got Colin as Guardian. So background is like... Federal. So is your background What's common you folk, before? criminal, free dog, merchant, noble, soldier? We would be under soldier if you want. You don't have to. You, you could be a soldier. How you were raised, it's similar no. to D&D backgrounds. What did you do before you were an adventurer? Your character's a guardian now, but he could have been a noble who decided to take up the sword to defend Pugmire. Yeah. Or so like you could have been a so- Yeah. Or you no. could have been a criminal who changed their ways and have come back into the fold in Pugmire and decided to become a guardian and defend the ways of Pugmire because you've seen what life is like for bad dogs. Huh. Or you could have been an acolyte who decided learning about man wasn't for them, and so you started to fi- focus more on the physical, or you were a common folk who took the life of the guardian later in life to defend their home. So it really depends on the character you want to build. And it builds on to their personality, not necessarily a sort of build. 
like D and D. Because like with the uh, charisma focus, I think merchant, because that's like my my motivation is probably still going to be more. You can read the description. Useful trade. And the yes. descriptions might give you a better. I just saw that right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll give you a better idea, I think. But I also about thought about doing a ratter with a merchant's background. So more rogue style merchant than soldier style merchant. But I but then it would be a charisma based rogue rather than a dex based rogue. So far. What about you? <laughs> what is your uh, hunter background? Uh common folk. You can focus on your, your own individual stuff first, but then after we get some of that stats going, we'll really kinda try and hammer down how you guys know each other, how you work together. So that the uh, the stats make sense, so to speak. The stats or the stats come together. You you have well built up characters, oh, so that you have kind of a rapport. And part of this session zero is about coming up with that rapport, right? Uh, like the werewolf game with B and Cora, they decided they were high school, they were best friends in high school. So when they changed, that rapport carried over at the start of the uh, start of the game. Hello. Hello. We're recording. We are recording. You're okay. No, no, that's just for your information. Awareness. Yeah. Mm. Legal so, uh, indemnification. Or whatever. Colorado is in one party of the state, so as long as the per- uh, one person knows, it's fine. But it's still polite. It's right. <laughs> it is still so polite. polite. But. So. No, sorry. That appointment took longer than expected. That's totally fine. We gotta find you a chair. No, I'm just gonna stand right here. Oh. I'm gonna look at this. Oh, that's the Pugmar one. I don't have the monarchies on, which you get to be a cat. Thank you for the lease. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 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 One of the monarchs is you will have to be aware that you're going to be in Pugmire, so we'll have to come up with a reason why your character's in Pugmire and why they are hanging around a bunch of dogs in Pugmire. So we can come up with several things in this session zero to make that work, right? Mm-hmm. So, and much like the dogs, you will have a breed of your own. As well as your calling. So cats have different callings than dogs. Makes sense. So they are similar in many ways. <laughs> is cat callings, which is the first thing you'll get to ch- uh, choose. Okay. Cat callings are champions, footpads, mansers, ministers, trackers, oh. wanderers, and that's it. Like a tracker, like bounty hunter kind of dealio, or maybe a a ranger type. So the best I can understand, because I have a little more uh, experience with Pugmire, is more. the monarchy is a champion's kind of like a yeah. fighter type. Stuff. Fighter, uh, fighter kind of creation. A footpad is close to a rogue. Mm. A mancer is a type of mage, I believe. Yeah, mage. A minister looks like it's a bard type. And a tracker also looks like it's a ranger type of some kind. And wanderer looks like, actually just from the picture, it looks like a wanderer is like a monk type. So, can I yeah, you can it? absolutely look at it. And so I'll, I'll find the part in Pugmire regarding how cats name themselves. Thank you. Oh, look at him. He's so handsome in his little, little armor. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag definitely a cat lady. You are, you are in fact yes a cat. <laughs> you can't really throw stones though, you know. I, you're you're a cat dad. I, so once you come up with your calling, I'm gonna go with a bird. I'll wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a pen or a pencil? It's a pencil. Okay. She's, she's played this game enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it looked like a pen, so yeah, I thought maybe yeah. someone would have accidentally written a pen. For this basic stuff, I would I would often write it in pen. Yeah. Because I'm not going to change the name or the calling. Yeah. That's fair. Throws, that's what you're going to put your uh, primary abilities in. Ah, okay. And that are the character. Okay. Yep. And that's based on your calling. So Does anybody else? I mean, numbers. It says uh, stamina dice, a D8 for level, stamina points, 8 plus constitution modifier. Oh, that's your health. Well, but it doesn't tell me how to figure out what my constitution is. That that comes later, so ah. we're, we're, you're going to have to round back. Okay. 
So <clears throat> smell magic. Smell magic is a spell. I love it. <laughs> I would like to have projectile vomiting as one of my attacks, please. Uh, a cat should have hairball. Uh, my favorite. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've had we we've, we've had them sleep in the bed and at three a.m. you see. Like, <laughs> and, it's like, and you're no longer on the bed. <laughs> no, and, you know, no, it is woken up with my neighbors probably hearing me going, "Not in the bed." <laughs> <laughs> Under is fine. We'll get to that later. He's not sleeping with cat puke. There's nothing that will wake me up faster than the sound of a cat forking up a hairball. Yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. Does anybody need this for uh Um background? just so you know? Chris you got background? Yeah. There is something in the cat world called a Magi? Which means you don't have a house. Okay. Just so you know. Which I'm, they don't have it in the book, but I'm going to just say that that's the same stat block as a stray in Pugmire. Perfect. And for, for those of you who have gamed with me before, I would just like to read to you what my calling's view is on champions. What good is your armor if I can start a fire inside of it? <laughs> oh, this is the perfect choice for me. Wanderer, so is that have, like a spellcaster have... type? I'm going to burn it to the ground. We have we have Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there'd be one that just directly mentions starting fires. <laughs> and I found it after I had chosen. Clearly, it was meant to be. Okay. <laughs> you're playing a Bruja next BTM, just so every time you start fire, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd still start the fire though. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't think anyone would be like, oh, she's afraid. It's like, she keeps doing it. <laughs> uh, she's a uh, colloquial. <laughs> she's known by the community as the dumbest Druha I've ever seen. <laughs> I feel like I have to go with House Rex because I have a cat named Rex. Mm. You know, so all right. it's all very fitting. Do we have to do something to mark what our primary abilities are? Is that something that... That's, that's, a, that's what the saving throws are. Okay. Just check it then? Yeah, just fill in those yeah. circles next to the saving throws. So the primaries would be under our saving throws then too, is what you're saying? Then, yeah, oh. the, the, your saving throws are the same thing as your primaries. Oh. Now we're doing the... Uh, when you get to ability scores, it's the standard array of ability scores. I get a musical instrument gained yeah. under unusual circumstances. Roll for me. Just that off. Yeah, all of you have unusual circumstances. Now I will sing you the song of my people. <laughs> One. Uh, four. 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 I received it as payment from a poor family of cats with no coin to spend. Go. Cool. The coin of Pugmire is plastic. In the middle of man. Because it didn't exist before man. And man forged it and placed it everywhere. Riches untold. <laughs> Find new plastic lines. <laughs> Yes, there are. Along with plastic, um, the art of creating plastic hulls for ships. Ah, uh, yeah, to, to, to traverse the acid sea. Yep. And then, <laughs> finally, background. So let me just know when everyone's done with uh, backgrounds. So you said standard array of ability score. Yep. And, uh, 8, 10, 12, 14. It is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. And deriving the modifier is the same as D&D, so minus 10 divided by 2 round down. And it's an algorithm. I, no, I know it by heart. I and just, uh, why they keep keep it around? So I have a house secret. Where do I find the information, or where would that go? I guess. I think you're just gonna have to put it in your notes. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was something yeah, that I believe it's in your notes. You can check the back of the sheet, but I believe because I'm assuming it matters at some point. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the fifteen fourteen is the ability scores that I get to. Choose. Yeah, you can choose where they go. And, Christine, because you aren't here, yes. you will need to collectively come up with three NPCs that you all know and have regular dealings with, including personalities and things like that, and I'll put in my own input, and one NPC that you yourself know, and then you can choose to let other people know them, but it doesn't have to be the whole group. Okay. That right. will become relevant in the plot. Yeah, and, and my notion... At least something uh, that occurred to me was because I've got a merchant background, I may have traveled to the monarchies of Mal in order to trade and whatnot. So that might be how uh, 
we met. Oh. That would make a lot of sense. Okay. So if I add uh, 12 to Constitution, then I add the plus 2 to make it 14, then right? Correct. Okay. And do the numbers, do the scores go here or here? That's a debate on the internet I don't care to get into. It's whichever one you prefer. Okay. <laughs> really? There's a debate on that? There was a meme war about it like oh, three months well, ago. Those aren't serious. Ah, some people took it way more seriously than they should have. Like most meme wars. <laughs> it's however you, however, whatever makes the most sense to you. I usually put the ability score top, modifier below. That's what I did. But, whatever. It's like the toilet paper, Keegan. It's very um, important. It's like the toilet paper, Keegan. It's very important. Okay. 15 minus Divide 20. by... So, 5. Mm-hmm. Divide by 2. Round down. So that'd be 2.5. You should just have a system that doesn't round down. So you have plus 2.5. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> makes you feel cool when you're good about yourself. Or terrible when you <laughs> fail by 0.5. <laughs> I succeeded by 0.5. <laughs> so... Your modifier is the square root of your ability score. Get out of here. <laughs> Nearest rational number. <laughs> no. Never. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, you, you just make sure all the stat numbers are on. So one thing I like about the OSR is a standard distribution. Mm. OSR? Uh, old school revival. It's D- it's old school D&D. Oh, okay. Basically, or and old school D&D distribution. Ideas. So, yeah, because doing the minus square three. root would give you a logarithmic projection. Yeah. It's uh, minus three at the bottom and plus three at the top. Huh. And then it, so, like, zero is, a uh, plus zero is nine, ten, eleven, I think twelve. Do the dogs have these, the house upbringing decision? Nope. That's a cat thing? Yeah. Because we're so special. Um, okay. And yeah, everyone, just so you know, your proficiency bonus is plus two. Okay. Because that's based on level and that, that never changes. I'm really happy they got rid of skill points. With armor, how does it work with the dex mod? So it'll change based on we'll get to that when okay. we start doing equipment and things like that. I'm just trying to decide whether I want to put a bonus in dex or con. Okay. Con would... So heavy armor... At some point, heavy armor just stops using your dex mod. Yeah. So it really depends... On the armor type, so let me... Is there a... S- oh, it's, it's based... Boy. So, it's actually based on your aptitudes, it looks like. <laughs> so, 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 like, heavy armor denies you a dex bonus, uh, but the max bonus is for light. Yeah, the dog can wear heavy armor, giving her a defense of 16. So, yeah, because there's no actual armor armor. Mm-hmm. So... So heavy armor, so, 16, and no dex. So you just choose, yeah. You choose either you're wearing light armor, which is 11 plus your dex mod. Uh-huh. I think, because I think your calling gets all three. Yes. Uh, medium, you can choose to be wearing medium armor, which is 13 plus your dex mod. Okay, okay. Or you can choose to wear heavy armor, where it's 16, no dex mod added, and your two-legged and four-legged speeds are reduced by five feet. Ah. Uh, so you're a little slower, but you're a little more heavy armored out. I think everyone starts with the same speed. And then so dex are we ch- working on more uh, equipment then? Or? That's your I was trying to figure out what I should put in my dex. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's why I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. No, no, that's fair. That's fair. It's based on your aptitude, so you'll see you'll see the aptitude stuff, and we'll get to that okay. soon. I just want everyone's aptitude. Yeah, I just want everyone's on the same page, yeah. Oh, jeez. Ah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Not and we there's today. we don't roll. We've got set numbers, right? Yep. 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 My, okay. Yep. So. So yeah, intelligence is my dump stat, okay. and I figure it's not so much that I'm like a low IQ dog; it's that I didn't get a formal education. Yeah, that's fine. That's... So there's just a lot of knowledge that I don't have. Certainly. I mean, that's that's fine. Dumb question. So if I'm putting 15 in my dex for my, uh, I have a house ability plus uh-huh. 2 to my dexterity score, does that add? That turns it to 17. Okay, I just want to make sure it wasn't a, just a plus 2 bonus. Oh, no, no, no. It be... does not say that. That's fair. That's fair. Just... Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, so then what I'll do is actually a 16. So... Oh, you want that d6 back, Michael? Yeah. And for all the dogs at least, oh, just gosh. so you know... Your starting speed is 30 and 40. So, oh, well, 30, 40. 30, 40? Uh, except for you, because you're wearing heavy armor, I think. No, I'm not. Are you not? Okay. 30, 40. 
Okay. Unless you you decide to wear heavy armor, then it's uh, 25. What do you do with the unusual? Unusual circumstances where I decided to pull from. Yeah, and you can come up with your own. You don't have to roll for it, but it is kind of fun to roll for it sometimes if you don't have anything. I mean, yeah. it all, it's also hilarious. What do you do with the unusual circumstance? Do you just write it down somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, it's just something to, as a role playing hint. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with a modification of uh, inherited for parent after dying in mysterious circumstances. They weren't mysterious circumstances, but it's a mysterious uh, item. Or yeah, I so. got you. Namely, a Scottish broadsword and targe. I'm not very charismatic in this game. That's going to be hard for me to not try to do that. So you're less of a... More of a... Yes. Also, it's going to be a lot more burn them witches kind of mm-hmm. dialogue, I think. Okay. <laughs> a very standoffish cat. I was, I'm thinking maybe socially awkward. You know, surrounded by dogs. They're weird. They smell gross. Okay. They think men are gods know. rather than divine retainers. Exactly. <laughs> what is wrong with these dogs? Actually... I might, I might go for heavy armor. Oh, that's... 25, 35 versus 30, 40? Yep. So how does the, do the stamina points and the stamina dice actually work out? Okay, so um, how it is, is um, and this is a D&D thing, that's, your, that's how many points you have total. Mm-hmm. So I would have... And what it does is um, when you do a short rest... You would, uh, you decide, hey, I want to use one of my stamina dice to heal during a short rest. So you'd roll the die, ah. and that's how much you heal. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. The eternal question, do I want a mini-max or be balanced? Uh, the real question is, what would be best for your character's personality? Mm. Since Pugmai, though, uses a d20 system, is definitely more geared towards the role play. Play your character up. Think okay. of who they are and how they'd act, and what would be best to... Okay. Simulate that sort of personality. Bug Meyer does have, in my experience, at least running at way more social encounters than your standard D&D. And the nice thing is, is the one thing I like about the three, the 5e system is if you made a min-max character, you will be slightly better than someone who didn't min-max. Mm-hmm. But the person who didn't min-max is not going to be so far behind that they're going to be just completely outpaced by a min-max. Oh, okay. Which allows people to... Which encourages people to do that and allows min-maxers to play around with non-min-maxers in an easier way. I appreciate that it has the little, from the first page where you pick your class, your calling, It every time it reminds you this is what you get uh-huh. throughout this. It's a well-laid-out book. I, I yes. appreciate that a lot. Yeah, versus uh, some books where it's just like, Hey, you need this equipment. This equipment is three chapters ahead. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, where's the armor again? Uh, it's in the proficiencies. Or the tricks. So, no. so that that threw me off, too. So, let me, uh, I'll grab the book from you real quick. Aptitude. So, light armor aptitude means you're wearing light armor that just gives that. So, it's a blanket thing based on your aptitude. So, if your class... Oh, so. Or you can go up to medium, yeah. yeah. So that's your choice. Yeah. So, yeah. The only thing that has the extra dice and things like that is the, the weapons chart. Okay. So we can actually figure out your health real quick for both of you guys since you both set your ability scores, correct? Yeah. So. Yeah, I am going to go with the heavy armor. Okay. So your total HP or stamina at this point is. 10 plus your constitution modifier. Okay. And stamina your points is the health, right? Yeah. And your stamina die is a d10. Uh, so wait, what did you say about the current stamina? Or stamina dice? You get Max. a d10 for your stamina die. A d10. A d10. You don't roll it. You don't roll it. It's oh. something that you, you just use for the short rest. So you'll see... Okay, yeah, I got stamina points. So the die, you just put a D10, like in there. Oh, okay. Just so I can actually remember. Mm-hmm. I get. I mean, you handle animal and survival with your skills. And that was the skills that came with, uh... Did you pick your skills yet, Mike? Uh, yeah. Okay. Persuade that and notice. Or okay. was the common folk that I got the skills. Oh, you got the two skills from common folk. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll bring up your, uh... I, I got... They're bluffing sense of motive. Okay, I so, real quick for... Liam, uh, will you... 
So you'll have to pick two skills from this list. What's balance do? It's like uh, acrobatics, that's your ability to balance, run mm-hmm. and jump, things like that. If my dexterity was negative, would I take a penalty to defense? Uh, it, only if you have not heavy armor. Okay, okay. Going around in heavy armor all the time. Oh, but I will take penalties to any dex check. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I'd rather be down. Okay. Maybe he just has a drinking problem or something. There you go. No, you fool, that's the chocolate stout. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ate some bad uh, uh, random stuff on the rounds. So I get one melee weapon. Is there any limits, or can I choose any melee weapon that I want from the list? I believe so, based on your uh, what. So real quick, no, uh, your book in this case. You want to check out your aptitudes because if you don't have if you don't have a martial weapon aptitude, then okay, then yeah, you can pick any weapon. Okay, that's just how it works. I'm not falling behind us. Not right now. We're, we're just gonna go over and just check. Make sure you are. I appreciate that it's two pod, not two handed. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, well, it's a fantastic. little touches. It's, oh, all the little touches yeah. are fantastic. So, um, first tricks. So, write down all of these ones under your tricks. And, uh. Where do we put our weapons? Here? Uh, yeah, for attack. Okay. Because yeah. that'll give you the D, yeah. the attack. Etc. So, okay. and it's your strength mod plus your proficiency to hit with a melee weapon, and okay. it's your dex mod plus your proficiency bonus to hit with a uh, finesse or a range weapon. Okay. And having the preferred ability for the class, does that make a difference? Oh uh, no, that's for the saving throw specifically. So the one that you marked is your modifier plus the proficiency. Oh, okay. And then the other ones are the, the just the straight mod. So it's basically right. all those skills. All is. those, and then you get to pick one from either this one or that one. And since you chose the fighting one, you probably take the fighting styles. Okay, yeah, the stuff that's on the highlight when I have to actually you choose. choose yeah. The other ones are the ones you just have. So you said attack was strength plus proficiency? Yep, for melee attack. Uh-huh. And then what's the roll column? Hmm? The roll column. I'm glad you asked. Oh, that's the, just... uh, that's, I think that's the... No, that's hmm. Damage. No, damage is next to it. Yeah, so, so damage modifier. I have no idea what the roll is supposed to be. Then. Mm. Or maybe the the I think the damage is the uh the bonus. So yeah, you'd roll you put move this to the the roll oh. roll damage. So you roll in that and then because it's a strength weapon. Well it's got finesse though. You can choose. Yeah. It's your choice. And then so you'd use the modifier of either. Same. So do I put plus four here then? It'd be plus two. It's your choice between the two. Well, so, but I thought I had the proficiency. Not for two. damage, only oh. the attack. Okay, I see, I see. Okay. So it'd be plus four under attack. Plus four. I'm going to put dex strength, so I remember that. Okay. And I'm just going to list what the weapon is. I'll put it next to it, so I remember what this is. Oh, no, I'm, I'm all kinds of wrong. My fault. Ugh. It's attack is the weapon. Roll is the... Uh, the plus four for you, because that's the attack roll. Yeah. That's the roll modifier, the, and the damage is the D8 plus two. Okay. So, I'm just all kinds of mixed up. Hey, we're, we're all learning. Uh, two. So, the attack is the weapon itself? Yep. Yeah. That doesn't go over in type? No, type is the uh, the, the damage type of the weapon. Uh, or if the, I think if there's the special things like minus light, which means I can have two of them, one mm-hmm. of each paw. But no, the ty- yeah, but the type is like uh, it'll say slashing, bludgeoning, or piercing, and that matters because certain opponents are going to have uh, resistances to that, which means you divide the damage in half. Do I get to pick what kind of unusual um, musical instrument that I have? Yeah, you can. Your choice. Also, in hmm. uh, I don't uh, for both of you actually, you have your rucksack here. So this yeah. is the equipment you have. Mm-hmm. Oh, you write your down already? Yeah. I do. Okay, Liam, you'll need to write that down real quick. So if you come over here, oh. I'm not calling it all out. I'm, I'm sure. thinking a recorder from a poor family. Yes. Yeah. You could do uh, what? What are those? <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'll go with just a plastic recorder for now. That Ooh, seems like if a it's lot. A plastic recorder. It's incredibly valuable. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe not a plastic recorder. Maybe yes. not a plastic because plastic, plastic, yeah, plastic is the uh, the. That's the right. Well, Mm-hmm. You could be, uh, but that makes sense though. A poor family has nothing else to pay me for my services. They give me their one piece of good work. Yeah, yeah. Or 
You have like you have a uh, a harmonica. I'm going to show up with a recorder for our next session now. <laughs> <sighs> oh boy. My mom's a third grade teacher. I have I have my sources. I can get one. You have your sources. For all of my recorder needs. So How often you do you call in those favors? More often than you might think. That's No, I'm kidding. That's, that's like a dollar. From like any store. That's it's true. not the same if you don't get it from the music room though. There's just something about them. Well, yeah, it's got all of the, of the, uh, the essence of years of young children blowing into it. Exactly. It just kinda kinda seeped into the uh <laughs> seeped into the all the cracks of the uh, seams. Did you guys already pick all of your breeds? Breeds? For your dogs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm your, a yeah, breed. Your diggity dogs. Scottish terrier. Is anybody a German shepherd? Oh wow. Well, but I have a I have a German shepherd I'm now. Nice. Garris is kind of a German shepherd, I think. I don't know, we haven't gotten back to test for this, the DNA test. I just want to know what he is. What? Well, yeah, but this will tell me, like, what percentage he is German Shepherd, what percentage he is, like, garbage, you know? <laughs> <sighs> so, am I just missing cat breeds in here, or...? Yeah, the breeds are probably directly after the Collins, if it's set up the way the Pug book is. Collins, she's a house, as well as a few I don't know if they actually have different cats. Yeah, it could be house or family. Maybe, breed. okay, that's page 60. So, it's not... You know, table of contents. Oh, hello. I've already picked a black cat. So, in the Pugmire, the breeds isn't capitalized, even though it's a completely different section. Houses may replace your breed. That is a... You know, you have a house. And you don't have a breed. Well, that's what I, I thought. Family was my... Family's just your name. Just the name. Yeah, it could be your last name. Fa- family's oh. just the name. So yeah. is it yeah. house instead of breed? Yeah. It's yeah. house instead of breed. Um, yes. Okay. So, I'm doing a clay bag and Tarj. Okay, okay. they could just be a long sword and shield for the purpose of uh, uh, yeah, stats, but that's fine. the clay bag is the Scottish basket hilt to draw yeah, sword. that works. Because so, I'm a Scottish terrier. Yep. <laughs> and I find a clay bag and targe buried in my uh, father's backyard. Who needs what What left? Uh, so, you need? do you need to do your tricks? I did the tricks. You did your tricks. Did you do your equipment? Yes. Okay. Uh, so... Wait, what are tricks? Is, uh, I think cats have their own versions. It's oh, secrets. Yeah, it's your secrets. Oh, I get it. Dog tricks. Ah, oh, that's so uh, cute. I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna order. Do I need a Pugmire book too, or would this be no, sufficient? No, they're, they're standalone to... games. Okay. But they are 100% compatible. Okay. Which is nice. Yeah. Pick your, uh, pick your calling tricks as well, Thomas. When you get there through, and you'll, you guys will write down the page numbers or whatever for okay. your, your things. And I think because next week we're off. The week after that, I'll come in with, like, note cards or something like that so you guys can write down what your skill tricks are and have them there. So let's over. tricks. Or your your tricks or secrets. Ah, uh, yes. Are we not going to have this hmm? with us? Oh, you, you'll have, well, I'm bringing them and you'll just fill them in before we start. Oh, I thought you meant for us to use during the game. I'm like, I wrote them all down with the page numbers already. Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah, you'll have those, but if you actually have the whole skill trick mm. or whatever written, written. out... Makes that, sense. Rather than having to go to a book and flip through it. It's uh, the same thing with Werewolf. Eventually everyone writes down their gifts on mm-hmm. note cards so that the book is used and mm-hmm. flipped through as little as possible. Now, how do I calculate defense initiative and speed for the cat? Okay. So, the uh, did you care? Kitty, if you will. Yes. So, did you get any secrets on armor proficiencies? Yes. Yes. So, light armor aptitude. So, you're probably wearing light armor. So, what that means... Is if we go to your secret, we go to the secrets part of this chapter. Very stylishly dressed for because cats can have better fashion sense. Of, of course, skills, secrets. So aptitude secrets. You'll notice that light armor covers a large swath of things, and what that would do is give you an eleven plus your dex mod. Mm-hmm. So that would be your defense. Okay. So for so, you, would be thirteen. Okay. And do I need to pick out, or should I just write under like? Equipment, this is what I'm wearing. Yeah, you can come up with that as a descriptive text. Light armor is really just a swath because they didn't want to go through tons of different, you know. Yeah, it could be leather. Or cloth. Leather, cloth. Just, that seems like extra. I'm just going to go with leather of the animals that I've hunted. And then your initiative on. is your uh, dex modifier. Okay. And your speed is 30, but if you drop to all fours, which is the bottom one, it's 35. 
Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. I love that if you drop to all fours. That's fantastic. I love this game already. Hashtag definitely a cat lady. <laughs> and then uh, you'll get to pick or roll once we get to that point. Your ideal, for you, your mystery and your flaw. For the dogs, they will pick their ideal, their bond, and their flaw. Okay. Where is, uh... And you can come up with your own as well as they have trackers or things you can roll if you want to roll. Oh, yeah. We're going to roll that out. If a particular flaw comes to mind, though, and it doesn't, like, mesh with anything here, then just make your... (laughs) I'm kidding, I won't do that. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) I need a squirts bottle. Just, I want (laughs) to... Bad! Down! (laughs) Bad kitty! Bad Bad kitty! kitty. (laughs) So, what is the unseen, capital U? The unseen are, like, demons. They move through the world and they can possess dogs and cats. Mm. An example of one is the rabid demon, which possesses a dog and makes them foam from the mouth as they swish and attack violently. They seem to be thirsty first as the demon seems to prepare the body for combat. (laughs) And then the frothing comes out and they attack and they try and spread the demonic disease. Dang. And, uh, yeah, companions at some point get that as an ability, right? To be able to see those? Yeah, I believe so. The old cat I accidentally scared to death one night. <laughs> oh, I love that. Jesus Christ. So we will go to the fight, uh, the fighting styles then real quick, Liam. Okay. So that you can't get over my fear of Fighting styles. Here you go. So just come on over here and then just under fighting styles, under your tricks, write which one my you prefer. My love catnip and check. That's going to be my fall. <laughs> so much for rolling. <laughs> Some it's, spoke to her. <laughs> it, a, just, it just spoke to me. I on, can't. On a deeply spiritual level. Oh, wow. What is most important to me? What Keeping is... the dogs out of our territory. You might want to change that one. Yeah. Although I mean, maybe I'm in the Pugmire Kingdoms learning more about dogs so I can keep them out of my goddamn lands. Now I'm going to re-roll that one. What? What? That number. This is my damage. Well, what where do you, do you get that number? Uh, that's the on the weapon, so I can... Oops, sorry. Okay, oh, I'm building a trove of knowledge about the old ones. Yeah, so, yep. Weapon, piercing. And who are the old ones? Uh, that's the same word as man. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't want to study men. Men are gross. <laughs> or humanity. Yeah. But yes. Women. I think at least once we're going to have to have it play it at my house, and then we can, I can use... Itty bitty as my character, as my prop. As game. your prop. Then we'll have instead of me making meowing noises, it'll be an actual meowing cat. Ooh. She'll meow on command. I think the next thing is you guys will start picking your bonds. Then we will start creating character backstories together. How you guys met. You will give a description of your character. Right, did, did everyone get the ideal bond? The, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Okay, for a second I thought she's, she said that we're all right. Done. No, what? she's already done. Oh, okay. Everyone else still has Someone's to do it, so. Okay. And you don't have to use the ones in the book if you have a certain idea about your character in mind. Okay. Just do that. You run it by me, yeah. so I know. I'll still look at the book. Just and so then we'll start idea. coming up with those NPCs together, your backstories, etc. So that... And we get to make up a family name, right? Yes. It doesn't have to be anything... Correct. Okay. Like, most are, like, cat breeds or some kind of play on cats, like the one in the book example with Mao. Could my ideal just be, uh, like, making money and trading? Or should mm. it be something a bit more idealistic? More, more ideal. Something, to, something your character strives for beyond okay. that. You want to get enough money? Possibly, like, bringing back honor to your family to know status. Mm. Something like that. Say? You want to get enough money to become a nope. Ah, uh, no, why doesn't that's, that's that's a works. relic? To become noble. But he does. Is oh, you have relics in this game. For that? So yeah. so relics are items from the age of man. Ah. That if a family collects it, then they can be allowed noble. They are considered one of the noble houses. Oh. And then they can become. They're in the running to become the next king of Pug or next king of, or queen of Pugmire because the noble houses all vote. So is everyone done with their bonds, ideas, spells, etc.? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I just know she was okay. a kind of a foot soldier who like had a heart so, of gold, but was just involved. I'm, I'm gonna either ask someone to go first to describe their character, their backstory. We're gonna go around the 
uh, table of who want, how you want your backstory to form. It's going to not be solid yet. It's what you you individually what you want your backstory to be. Mm-hmm. Then, once you've done that, we're going to, as a group, maybe modify it so your character fits better in the group. And then we're going to start discussing how your character met and started to interact with everyone at the table. Once we've done that, once we've done that, we'll have you solidify your character. You'll give your new background, clearly, or and then you will give a description of what your character looks like. And then after that, we are going to create three party NPCs that you all know. And then you will come up with one NPC that just your character knows that could become relevant in the game later. What was your question, Christine? Now, the ideal mystery and the flaw or the trick or whatever you guys... Are yeah. those secret to our characters or... They, they don't have to be. Okay. It's up, it's up to you. Uh, what it is is... Those are role-playing hints, and mm-hmm. as you play to those, you will get something called inspiration. Okay. And inspiration allows you to get the advantage on rolls. So in the game, this game, because the D20, like D&D, you roll a D20 typically. If you have the advantage, you roll two D20s and you take the higher of the two. If you have disadvantage, you take the lower of the two. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, because I... Yeah. I'm willing to go first, because I already have an idea. Okay. So, my cat is Vesper Von Caddis. Yes. What? Oh, I don't have a name. Oh, was I? No, no, that's oh, perfect. Vesper. Uh, she is a black cat with green eyes. Vesper means evening in Latin. So, Catus is also Latin for cat, for what it's worth. Um, but she is with House Rex. She's a soldier. So it would be, uh, for the proper naming convention, it would be Vesper Catus Von okay. uh, Your House. Von Rex. Okay, I'll fix that. There we go. Okay, so Vesper Catus Von Rex. And she's a a soldier. Her goal is to rise to the top of House Rex, and I she's branched out trying to find ways to do that. She's from a lesser family, that's why she's just a a soldier, not a noble or some other scholarly field. Um, But she's got big dreams. So part of her additional paths is maybe coming to Pugmire to show that they can either. Broker pee- better peace with the dogs, or show that she can get some command over the dogs. Then yes, okay. my thought was I came across the merchant when searching perhaps to for information, things like that. I figure he would be my first contact with the world mm-hmm. of Pugmire, since you're maybe not doing training with the ki- with the monarchies, but at least close to the yeah, border. Yeah, well, in the past, my family may have gone to the monarchies. And made contact there, or like you knew my father or another merchant. Or, I think that's a yeah. good. And then my whole thing is, I want to, I want to rule my house. Yeah. And I need to get experience. I need to show that I am worldly enough to rise to the top. Perfect. That is an excellent choice. So, who would like to go next? I can go since I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I assume that naming was part of this process. It, it <laughs> is, but everyone forgets. Yep, I am. It, it's the hardest part of the character. It really is. The one I came up with was Tagbard McTerry. Tagbar? Tagbard. Tagbard. Yes. I kind of love that. <laughs> A uh, Scottish Terrier. Uh, Scottish Terrier companion. So, uh, so he's smaller. So he's about four feet tall? Yeah, s- smaller and more charismatic terrier rather than mm-hmm. a pointer type or a worker type. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we have a long and proud history of being powerful warriors before we got taken over by the breeder and uh, made all cute. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, so the background is a merchant, and the, my notion is my father was a merchant trader, and my mother died when I was young, so I wound up essentially being raised in the merchant caravans going back and forth to the I didn't get any kind of a formal education, but I did learn how to fight from the merchant guards. And my father always told stories of how our family used to be great and powerful nobles, or if not nobles, at least powerful clan chiefs, before the pugs took over and before the monarchies were established. Going way, way back. And I, I always kind of treated So before those... Pugmire was actually a city? Yes, before everything was unified under the uh, under the pugs mm-hmm. and then the hounds. And it could be that our family had uh, 
may have sided with the hounds. Okay. And left with the hounds and then come back. Okay. But that's all, that was all just stories, I thought, until after my father died, I returned to our home and I dug up a uh, clay bag and targe. Well, essentially, it's Scottish style basket hilted broadsword and a small circular shield. And uh, they seem unusual. It's not a standard longsword or a standard shield. The shield had patterns on it. It seemed unusual enough that I thought there might be some truth to the claims. Plus his odd style of dress uh, involving a kilt instead of trousers and a uh, banded uh, plaid. Um, what do they call the thing? Oh, a sash. Sash, yeah, yeah basically. So, yes, he's, he's a very Scottish terrier, and uh, because he showed so much proficiency learning from the merchant guards, he joined up, he enlisted either with the army or the uh, uh, police or the royal guard or something to that effect, but then quickly became disillusioned when he realized that warfare was radically different from free trade. Uh, people wound up getting harmed more often than helped. And the whole institution was used to uh, to oppress people and control them and harm them. So he left uh, whatever uh, army or guard organization. And now uh, his ideal is liberating the chained, kenneled, and beaten, helping people gain freedom and self-sufficiency. Uh, his bond, he is inspired by the memory of his father and the free-ranging merchant culture he was raised in. And the flaw is, no matter what, he just can't ignore abuses of authority or obey unjust and stupid masters. So from the code of man, the biggest issue he takes is with the um, obey the master command. Yeah. Uh, um, I think what we should do for your character mm-hmm. is right off the bat, because the army... Is fairly just. I think we should join the police dogs, and your character was in the, the bad part of town. Okay. And perhaps the police dogs were really downtrodden on the cats and the rats specifically. Oh, so now you have okay. maybe sympathy towards cats and rats specifically. Yep. And maybe even think that the rumors about how the badgers are so evil, etc., that maybe that's not all Absolutely. that true. Yep. Well, and because I would have met uh, cats, possibly rats, lizard folk, yeah. and the whole thing while I was training. So I definitely have more uh, egalitarian view about the species. Yeah, exactly. So that might... I think that would work really Yeah, well. and I would have joined the police trying to protect people and then realized I was not protecting, I was oppressing them. Yeah. Um, I like that. Of course, your dog is digging in shock. Nice. Oh, of course, it was buried in the yard. <laughs> that's right. That's what so... my dog like. Oh, Just perfect. Have to that kind of a, water, uh, you know. The horn got a little Drawing. sketch. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna order cat armor for Striker now, so I can use that for my. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Who would like to go next? Uh, who even wants, anyways? So is it her and you, yeah. or? Yep. Okay. So Michael has gone. Thomas has so. gone, and I have gone. Yeah. Correct. Holy go. shit! My character's name is ben- Bernard Benjamin Beagle. Okay. Bernard. Perfect. Okay. Uh, grew out in an outer town, but family was responsible for taking care of general monsters and going into town and back out, or into the city to bring goods to trade and back for the town. Uh, trained to hunt monsters by my uncle. And do you have a name for your uncle? I do not. Alright, we'll come up with that in the next step. Anyway. It's a good name for a dog. Alright. Trained my uncle to kill monsters. Yeah. Uh, decided to leave home to both help people by hunting the monsters and the enjoyment from the thrill of hunting them down. Perfect. Very nice. Any descriptor- descriptions you'd like to throw in there? Uh, Let me think of that later on. Yeah. Alright. So it's now between Tomas and Liam. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm bad at making names. So, uh, I'm gonna go with Sheen, which is just a horrible way to pronounce the French word for dog. Fantastic. Sheen? Sheen what? <laughs> uh, colleague. Anyway, so, shelter, you know, raised by the Church of Man. Anyway, so one day, 
Sheen finds a symbol of the Church of Man in his stuff. Can't figure out how it got there. Decides that it's a, uh, a message that he needs to go out into the world and preach about man and peace. So that's how he gets in with, like, travelers, like, around. Oh, you people are going somewhere? Okay. I'll go with you. Uh, any, any descriptors that you want to bring up that like, jump to mind? Like, just... character look, or how? Did, what was the relationship with the the church, or the church teachers? They have a good relationship, maybe? You no know, good relationship. Until they just, just walked out, and they were like, okay, um... Maybe he still does, luck. maybe. Yeah. Maybe we can come up for you one NPC, like yeah. one of the one of the teachers or one yeah. of the members of the church who your character has a stronger tie to. So think on that. Uh, any physical descriptions though uh, that you want to just put forward before we do the final? Not yet. Not, not yet. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. The only thing is, I'm struggling to actually come up with a fleshed out uh, backstory. But my background is uh, common folk. My ideal is uh, protect home. My bond is that time monsters nearly killed me. And then my flaw is keep my anger in check, so... Okay. Um, do you want help from the group to um, come up with the, your character? I could, actually. Yeah. Because okay. I'm actually kind of struggling. So common that. folk might be that you didn't live in the city proper. You lived in one of the outlying towns that traded with Pugmire. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or And perhaps monsters attacked your village and that forced you to go into Pugmire and learn the tricks of the trades of the guards or even the Royal Pioneer Society to hunt monsters because of what happened to your village. It's also uh, immediately a possible reason you could have met uh, 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 Bernard. Terry. Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. Um, is, uh, you, your village could have been attacked and then like he comes in later and is like... Or hey, man, it could have been his uncle. Him. His uncle's like, and this is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so basically, I could live in a town outside of. Yeah, you could have lived in a town outside of Pugmire proper. Then you decided to live in the city proper, but you want to go out as often as possible to try and save people from the monsters. They could have come in just to get combat training to be able to play. I also thought, because I was wondering why I would be a soldier or a. Uh, a guardian or a police dog mm-hmm. instead of a merchant. And I think um, one possibility for what happened is our band, or our caravan was attacked mm-hmm. and raided and all the stuff got stolen and my father got killed. Okay. And that, like, I might have tried to fight him off, but then I couldn't. And so I wind up with nothing. I can't be a merchant. I mm-hmm. decide, well, these people stealing this stuff isn't very cool. I'm going to join the guards in order to go. stop that from happening. I like that. And make some money to be able to start yeah, so. certainly. So, maybe you do that. Okay. But, uh, these are just ideas. Yeah. Right? So, it, your character probably had their village attacked by monsters. Pugmire proper probably isn't attacked by monsters very often. Okay. But perhaps you're a distant relation to one of the noble houses of Pugmire, or one of the houses in general of Pugmire. And you're just one of those off branches who tries to start a village elsewhere. Do farming or something like that. Okay. Attacked by monsters, the monsters were defeated, and because of that, mm-hmm. you have this kind of right. anger yeah, related to monsters or people not doing something. So maybe you're a dog of action. Okay. That so when people are standing sense. around talking about things, you get angry and you have to keep that in check, hmm. or something like that. So just an idea. Okay. So. Can I justify spending six hundred dollars on cat armor for Striker to take pictures for this game? Yes. He will become the face of the face of the Pugmire videos, which would be kind of ironic because he's a cat. So we're so we're going with yes. We probably should order this. I'll have to do some measurements then. Okay. I mean, you can justify eight hundred dollars on a picture frame. I can, although that picture frame pays for everything, so it's a little it's a little different. So when you feel comfortable with your new backstory, Liam, we'll have you say it out loud again. Okay. So just give us some thought. Okay. Uh, if you need any help or so once I'm finished with my backstory or whatnot, then I you, can you, you'll, you'll say it out. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll explain it out loud of any changes that you did to our suggestions. Okay. And then we'll go through and we'll have people start thinking about how they met each other and the group as a whole. I'm thinking uh, you, your family probably knew uh, my father or the merchants he worked. 
I think Aries. And uh, so then you tracked me down because you figured I might be pathetic. You both so. probably met at uh Thomas. Oh my god. You both probably met closer to Waterdog Port, which is a is not part of Pugmire or the Monarchies, and mm. they actually constantly fought over it's it. Neutral. Yeah. And then y'all two probably know each other from the monster business. Um you might have like Helped him out when he first came into the city and was all yeah, like PTSD. Maybe you were both puppies. Yeah, you were both puppies, and, and you did, you kind of like did the hey hi <laughs> and have like childhood friendship thing while you just let us know when you're ready. Not quite ready. Oh, no. I know, I know. Just that's why I'm just saying. Let us know when you are. Yeah. So as a cop, oh, do we need to write this down? I was just gonna. No, no, no. We're oh, we're, okay. we're spitballing it right now, and then we're going to get to the final character backstories. Liam's writing it down in his backstory section. Just so he remembers. Oh, so Michael's character is a hunter, right? Yes. Yeah, because I think learned... what I wrote was that uh, I learned how to fight monsters from the guards and Pugmire, but... Maybe you both learned from Michael's uncle? Yeah. I mean, just a thought. Yeah. Maybe your your uncle's the reason his vill- the monster was defeated in his village. So what exactly is his uncle's background? His uncle is a monster hunter, and that's how he learned to hunt monsters. Okay, so maybe I can change guards to monster hunters just so it'd yeah. be a little easier. Or both. Yeah, or maybe both. Maybe you learned because you're a guardian rather than a hunter. Yeah. So maybe you started learning from his uncle and then came yeah. to the city. Came to the, the city, guards, joined the guard, and learned uh, learned to fight. Yeah, and that's so, how we. So you learn to so fight. So maybe I'll put guards and hunters just to be sure. Yeah. Yeah, after your village was attacked, his uncle could have saved y'all, and then with those mm-hmm. skills, you joined the guards, and that's where we met. Yeah. And I was all disillusioned. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the only thing is that all that other extra information might be a little disconnected. That's fine, we, and we can for the next fix it later. Or so. Yeah. Can't remember. Can't remember yet. So. Just Don't time. forget to come up with a name before we describe your background as well. That's what I do uh, what's your name. character's name? Bernard. Bernard Beagle. Benjamin Beagle. That guy. Bernard. We're going on a mini now. rant about my favorite antagonist okay. in Pugmire, I think. Ooh. The rats of Labrotor. <laughs> they are mice that wear white lab coats in secret, uh... and they bleach part of their fur white, and they believe that they can only ascend to godhood if they perform the 100 experiments of man. Which is, they capture other people and perform horrible and dangerous experiments on them. That's amazing. <laughs> Lab rats. I love it. <laughs> Lab rat tour. Okay, I'm yeah. so Mike. <laughs> yeah. So basically, your character uh, Just, worked for the it. guards at one point, right? Yes. Also, okay, I so do I like can because say I met you. The, the guards probably wouldn't train you as much to fight monsters. No, they just try to train you to fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. just so you you, you learn some basics about monsters, and then you join the guard. Yeah, because that's why you're a guardian and not a okay. hunter. Yeah. Really Though the guardians, I imagine the guards that's also part of their function. So I could, if the city so basically, I want to raise monsters for five. I can get through them. It's still yeah, worse. the guards probably didn't. Train you to fight monsters. Though they might have a thing where, like, hey, if a dire spider comes over. Yeah, the dire walls, ticks. Yeah, this is a dire ticks. <laughs> dire ticks. Oh. Dire ticks are, are an antagonist in this, yes. Okay, so maybe there are some monsters in Pugmire that we've got to take care of as well. The difference is, you're defending the town. I'm going out and trying to find them to kill them. Yeah, yeah. at least initially. Defense first. Oh, I wonder if there's. There a... they are. <laughs> dire ticks. Alright, and I'm actually ready to explain my backstory. Okay, so, go ahead. Uh, name okay. first, please. Okay, my name is Tucker. Tucker Pernies? Uh, yeah, might as well go. Well, that's usually what it is. Yeah, Tucker Pyrenees. So, I originally lived, well, I live in the town outside of Pugmire. My mo- some monsters attacked my village, and after the whole attack, I learned how to fight monsters from Bernard Beagle's uncle first to learn how to attack monsters and then when I learned how to fight uh, for myself by the guards just so I learned how to fight better and all so and that's join. where I met okay and that's right. where I met uh, attack birds so. okay attack bard okay and that's what I got for okay uh, real quick just off the top of your head yes or no are both parents still alive after the monster attack um 
Evens odds. I'll say, I'll say mother's injured. I was injured? Mm-hmm. Not mother killed, was, but... Mother was injured, but they both survived. Yeah. Because this was probably several years ago, since you were probably a kid. Yeah. Okay. And so, does your character have a stronger sense? Because he became a guard of Pugmire, and he's seen the city, does he feel Pugmire is a net good for dog kind, given the tenets of man? So you're saying that if my opinion's good with uh, Pugmire yeah. himself, then? Yeah. Hmm. Most dogs do. Yeah, I'll say yes. Cool. So, now that we've got that going, let's come up with some refinements on these character backstories on how they met. Uh, as we know, Tucker has the most connection so far out of you guys. So let's let's start to refine some ideas. Um, that we can do first meet up, things like that, and then we'll start coming up with how you guys really got to know each other, right? And started working with each other to fight monsters, since the monarchies have their own problems with monsters as well. So I'm thinking that maybe I leave the monarchies... He, I meet up with him on one of his caravans and ask to travel with him so I can learn more, you know, so I can be better. You know, I'm not particularly charismatic, so I've got to be a better monster hunter and stronger leader. Mm-hmm. And perhaps I come across a trained monster hunter and I want to learn in our travels. Um, I think it would be better, actually, if you met Tucker first, because Tucker is the connection here, right? So No, we know each other yeah, yeah. directly. No, no, you know each other directly, but then he would know him, and then he ah, knows... I see, I see, yeah. So Tucker knows yeah. Bernard. Okay, I see, yeah, that makes sense. So... I, you know, we, we meet up when I'm traveling with you, trying to learn more. Well, maybe. the merchant thing is a while ago. Like, the mer- there's the merchant so thing maybe, first, but, so then we got attacked, and then I got the you were, the guard. But are you back trying to sell though? I thought you were. You joined the guard to get money to go back to that. Yeah, I left the merchant. I, I left the guard. I don't know if I've started merchanting yet, ah. or if like I'm still in town, okay. just like drinking and being bitter. Okay, and, I uh, thought you had already started merchanting again. No, perhaps right. you. Perhaps your character went to uh, Dogwater because he's dis- oh yeah, dis- disillusioned, disillusioned by Pugmire. Yeah. Okay. And then you come in through the neutral ground. And you two happen to find a mutual tavern. Mm-hmm. So let me write down a mutual yeah. tavern idea name. So, and there's also the possibility that you were looking specifically for merchants that your family had connections with. Yeah, because my uh, uh, father McTerry would have known several cats and lizards. And lots so of yeah. and we'll say you guys them. met at the Sea Dog Tavern. Okay, oh, it was between that or the Salty Dog. I prefer Salty Dog. All right, let's do the Salty Dog. Yeah. What is it? Because I'm all salty. Vodka and grapefruit juice? Yeah. The Salty Dog Tavern is where you two met. Me and her? No, these two specifically. Okay. Did you, do you have a nickname for your... Is it... What do you prefer your girl by? Tag Bard. Tag Bard. I wasn't sure if you went by, like, Tag or something. Ooh. Maybe you Maybe you have that nickname to someone else or your character. TM. Has. TT. No, actually, I probably, I probably find Tag fairly offensive. <laughs> Got it. Which might mean why... Explain exactly why she calls you that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Tag. So. Tag, old boy. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's a good starting point for you two. And then maybe you're you you start off with the somewhat charismatic good choice of maybe saying something like, "I'd like you know to see an example of the people of." Pug, or a good example of the dogs or something like that, and your character has a high opinion of Tucker, maybe. Yeah, like maybe Tucker is... Left. You left the guard, but Tucker actually exemplified the guard ideals you thought they should be. Yeah, you're a decent guard. and Maybe you, you, you might have been disappointed with me for leaving, or I might have tried to convince you to leave. Yeah, or mm-hmm. something like that. Or maybe you left as well. Uh, I think you should have stayed in. Okay. He was not part of the, the water... Uh, district, ah. maybe, and so you guys met at the guard guard house, and he talks about maybe trying to rally the guards for monster hunting or something like that. You always see his anger at injustice, so he strikes you as a good dog, yeah, and someone you yeah. can have by your side or something. I like that. Yeah, or at least a better one. I mean, it ma- it makes sense again for somebody with anger issues to join the guard. Exactly. So that was my idea. Trying to say something about the police force that we have. <laughs> Not we, I'm talking about Pugmire's guard. <laughs> what do you mean? So, maybe we do that. 
That, does that work for you? So I basically stayed with the guards. So. You stayed with the guards for a while. Your character, maybe your character was starting to ruffle at not fighting enough monsters, but you liked the guard and you did feel like you were protecting people. Mm-hmm. Does that work? That'll yeah, work. Okay. But you're finally getting to that point where you're thinking about maybe joining the royal, leaving the guard and joining the royal pioneers. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah? You know, uh, this is just spitballing right now. Okay. Um... So, is that something you want to do? I'm actually not totally sure. On okay, so thing. that's why it's a spitball and you don't have to write it down. Because the royal pioneers are they go out and hunt monsters yeah. and find treasure. But your character might think that it's better to strike out on his own for right now. Who knows? That's up to you. So, you just, right. just do on that kind of thing. But these two will approach you in your backstory. And perhaps even uh, Vesper is the first cat you've actually had a sit one-on-one talk with because you've only seen cats at a distance maybe in the city. Okay. It, just ideas once again, so. And I'm, of course, the ideal specimen okay. of cat. Obviously. Maybe um, that's is probably the only cat I've met. Ever. Maybe. Well, maybe, yeah. Because there's cat, cats are in Pugmire, they're just rare. Yeah. So, maybe, yeah, maybe your character was in an upper district where they did not meet any cats, so you got to meet a cat for the first time. Okay. Yeah, you may have been asking around uh, for mm-hmm. merchants from Pugmire to... Because be... your ultimate goal is to gain power, right? Yeah, And you're gain... trying to do that by killing monsters? At least getting more experience and knowledge that would help me rise to the top. Okay. Whether it's sh- being the best monster monster hunter because we have issues with that, or being able to maybe, I don't know, burn the place to the fucking ground, that works too. Yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, you might have... Uh, in asking specifically about monsters, you may have, I may have been like, oh yeah, I know a guy who's that's got a kind of, for monsters. That's so. kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I'm talking yeah. to you like, well, you know, I need to get better. I need to get stronger. I need to be able to fight these monsters. You've, you've run into a lot of them in your travels. What do you know? Bring me in. Yeah, and so then like eventually. It. You have met this cat first time. Okay. All that. You talk about your dreams of being a monster hunter or something like that. Okay. And perhaps that tips... Tips her off to ideas and things like that. Starts asking questions about monster hunting, and you have connections to this guy. Okay. Now we need to figure out how to work in Sheen, Sheen into this as well. I think Sheen should have a connection to someone going going into this. Oh. Uh, so you're a shepherd, and you're raised by the church. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is specifically inspired to preach the word of man. Right, right. So maybe go out. Well, yes. he's I following me around. It hmm? would make total sense for him to have known your you at some I, point. Maybe he. As a maybe cop, you yeah. both knew each other in uh, Water Dog. You met him in Water Dog because he left Pugmire mm-hmm. to preach in Water Dog or something like that. Yeah, or traveling, you could have met him. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe. we could have. So you only left recently, because like we could have known each other earlier on. Yeah, doesn't really matter. Uh, it would make sense for, like, you need protection, you need, you don't know the, you know, to hook up with merchant bands and travel with them to their little towns while they're collecting Yeah, yeah actually, goods. you could have seen him in the backyard preaching the word of man to others. You you started to get to know him, and he tried to actually talk you down from your cynicism. You respect him for it. Yeah. And then it we're, we wind up leaving anyway, and then maybe you meet up again at Waterdog Port. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or on the other hand, maybe you were like preaching and trying to help the uh, uh, the downtrodden in the backyard, and we were like roughing you up at one point. You're telling you to beat it, and you know, stop giving attention to these uh, uh, these oh, folks. Yeah. They're not worth it. And uh, then after, but like seeing your example might have twigged me to the fact that hey, this is not okay. And you could have inspired me to leave in the first place. Yeah, that could work. What do you think of that, Thomas? Since it's your character, out preaching in the in the backyard, the backyard. preaching or even doing something useful like charity stuff. Yeah, charity, charity stuff. stuff. Riverwall. Riverwall is the name of the backyard. So Riverwall is the actual name. Oh, yeah. all right. Do charity, Riverwall. Yeah, if you're doing charitable works for the poor, and we the guard might have either protected you or harassed you and told you like beat it in the street for you. And then you could have preached against cynicism and intolerance and uh, guard brutality. So, is Thomas's character a uh, 
Hampshire or something. Yeah, yeah. a shepherd. Mm-hmm. Shepherd. Okay. Yeah, basically a cleric. What kind of dog? A collie. Bit of South German shepherd. Coat of man probably is the best section. It's not a direct church <sighs> section, but the church does help determine whether a house is noble or not because they are the ones who confirm the authenticity of a relic. They are injected with a holy serum that gives them the ability to heal. Nanomods. <laughs> Probably. Uh, what are you looking for exactly? Well, just the character of the church. Oh, uh, if you want to read uh, an <laughs> example character of the church, you go he here. Oh, just yeah. Yeah. Oh, he didn't. yeah, that's the example character. Okay, so, Thomas, you, you dig in the idea of being the street preacher and helper of the homeless in sure. Riverwalk? Yeah. Okay. So that's how you know each other. And maybe you guys, before you, you sailed in... You, you saw him in Waterdog Port as he's taken his expertise elsewhere, thinking that he's done his job at least the best he can in Pugmire or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, just going out, trying to broaden the, uh, the places where I take. Yeah. Okay. The message of man. Thomas is the shepherd who was preaching in Waterdog Port. Mike, Mike met Christine's character. So... Vesper Caddis came in to Waterdog Port while Tagbar was living there, trying to escape kind of the, the abuses of power he saw at the Riverwalk in Pugmire. Vesper wanted an example of good dogs and things like that because of her mission and her desires. He talked a bit, wants to learn more about Pugmire and things like that. You decide... And during that, you introduce, or Tagbar introduces Vesper to Sheen first. And Sheen is talking about returning to Pugmire proper to do a few things and possibly join the Royal Pioneers. Hmm. With that, you think about Tucker, given that Tucker was also a good dog in your mind. One who definitely stood up for the downtrodden. So you convince... Vesper to come with you to Pugmire proper. You all go to Pugmire and you do a bunch of jumping around and this haunt will become your typical tavern, we're going to say. And your typical da- tavern is the old dog. Right. The old dog with their specialty drink Nutrix. <laughs> At the old dog you met Tucker. Tucker was also expressing interest of retiring from the guard to maybe join the Royal royal Pioneers to really get out there and deal with monsters. And they have an initial contact, this initial contact being Bernard, who just a few years earlier did join the Royal Pioneers because the Pioneers are the concept of dogs helping each other to improve the condition of all dogs. That concept is alien to Vesper. The cat's put more emphasis on independence than community good, as a general rule of thumb. This kind of collectivism sort of intrigues Vesper. And so, Vesper, you have become the first cat to join the Royal Pioneers. Score one for cats everywhere. So, now we need to come up with the three NPCs. So, I assume one of them's my uncle, then, because that's shared between me and... Yeah, well, the three shared should be one that you all know. All know? Okay. Uh huh. One should probably be your uh, your teacher in the Royal Pioneers, because they are all assigned one. And I was thinking one that you could do is the bartender of the old dog, because that is your typical haunt. All right. Oh, And then you get to choose a third one, either maybe a city guard, since all of you have some contact with the city guard, and you will probably have several run-ins with the city guard, all things considered. Yeah, I was thinking possibly even an Inquisitor, one of the detectives, because mm-hmm. the Inquisitors would have uh, contact with the church as well as the guard. That's so that true. That would be the three of us. And, then and maybe... s- they would still be looking into things that are outside the norm, say like a cat running around, or, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a demon hunter who doesn't really, a monster hunter who doesn't really fit in either group. Yeah, well, you yeah. may have been... Uh, the, the, the Inquisitors may have used your skills for something that happened out in the woods, as opposed to in the city, that to investigate a crime or whatever that occurred outside the city walls. Yeah, that'd be known by the four of us, and then you could just be introduced, like, 
days. Uh, or, or even the Inquisitor that we... Because I'm thinking of a more as spies than religious nuts. Mm-hmm. The Inquisitor that uh, the four of us know could drop by the old dog and be like, hey, so we heard you know, there's been a lot of uh, chatter about there being a cat in town potentially joining the Royal Society. The Inquisitor could just check up and see what's going on. Maybe not not an antagonist, but a foil occasionally. Yeah, like well, the like, what are y'all doing? A, a frenemy. A frenemy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a foiler. I was thinking even like a, a Nick Fury type. Like the spy that we have on call, who's not part of the party, but it's mm-hmm. like, hey, we know this guy who's a detective. Yeah, maybe he maybe may he help us. Me not. Kind of that neutral NPC. He helps you sometimes, but sometimes he starts undercutting you because he's like, yeah, you did good this time, but there's something about you. Mm-hmm. You're yeah, like, come after us. That I don't you. like. Crime stuff. So. Yeah. So why don't we... So, now that we know that... That's Bloodhound. <laughs> there you go. Rosa? Scarlet? I like Scarlet. Scarlet Bloodhound. Scarlet Bro- Bloodhound. <laughs> An offshoot of the Hound family. Her family has lost noble status, but she places much in stock in the church. So that's the first mutual NPC. Oh, can the bartender be named Scruffy? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Scruffy Mutt. So the old dog will be located at Riverwalk then, I think, is the best. Walks. That's the backyard. Scruffy what? Scruffy Mutt. Scarlet Bloodhound. Who's kind of your frenemy foil. Yeah. And the teacher. Mm-hmm. So that one is probably closer to a noble, so... Alright, so... Let's think about the teacher. The teacher's probably a noble. German Shepherd. A German Shepherd, okay. Well, who are the actual noble... Are the shepherd German shepherds? We can make them. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no the only ones that are canonically uh, nobles in the book, based on an adventure and just two families' names, are the hounds, the pugs, the bulldogs, and uh, actually the Dobermans. Dobermans are a noble house. Germain okay. shepherd. There, there's not a. We can name complete him list. list. Garrus. Yeah, there's not a complete list. Fritz Shepherd. I like that actually. Yeah? Fitzwilliam Shepherd. Fritz, Fitz for short. Fritz. Fritz. William Shepherd. So that's our third MPC is yeah. Fritz. Fritz is your teacher and contact for the Royal Pioneer Society. So Fritz William Shepherd is his name. I yep. Scarlet. Cool. Shepherd. So now we just need an NPC all around. I already know who I want to use. Okay. Uh, one sec, let me put this under your character's name. So, um, I have Ajax Rex Von Rex. Ajax Rex Von Rex. He's a, he's noble in the House of Rex, but he is also the captain of the unit I was with. One of my trainers is a soldier. So, he's one of the ones who inspired me to rise above my humble beginnings as a lesser bloodline. Commander in the... Uh, the house guard. The house guard. Perfect. So. Excellent. Who wants to go next? I know Liam, you probably want to think of a... Yeah. Let's see. Who's, a, who's a, someone that you might want to use as, like, a contact? Can I actually use Bernard Beagle? No, because no. Bernard Beagle is Michael. He's not an NPC. Oh, right. uh, his uncle is... No, because he's using his uncle. You can use his uncle as a side NPC you know, but you want. I want you to come up with your own. Okay. Someone your character respects. It could be a... City guardsmen that your character respected. I could actually use my character's parents actually, because I did mention that they both survived. Yeah. So. so, what would your what's your what are your parents' names? Okay, I did not come up their names. Now you can. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I guess mother's name is Nancy. And Dad's name. I'll go with Harrison. Harrison. Harrison Perry. Perhaps they give you advice, and there a reason you go back to your home village or something like that. Yeah. So. Going with my uncle is John Luke Bagel, or not Bagel, Beagle. <laughs> John Luke Beagle. Beagle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the random number generator, what the gen- name generator came up with was Boris John Luke, but I just didn't want to use Boris because why <laughs> Boris Beagle? It would fit the whole uh, Beagle naming convention. Yeah. He's Jean Luke Miguel, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> <Surprise>. <laughs> 
Hey, I've actually got an ancestor named Angus Armour, son of Archibald Armour. So. And we're going to say he's a former professional monster hunter. Yes. You know, we'll make him a gruff tough guy, and we'll come up with things offline, but that's a good one for me to, to work off of. All right, we got two more. Who's interested in going next? I don't have a name or breed yet, but definitely some other uh, major merchant. Like major somebody merchant? Who, uh, leads merchant caravans, somebody who I would have known and met up with while I was growing up in the merchant caravan. Katrina Greyhound. Katrina Greyhound. There you go. <laughs> Fellow merchant. Perfect. Bold these names, and then I'll start doing uh, in-depth NPC write-ups over the over the next week. Just not probably next week because I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sheen Collett. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Disciple Philip Corgi. Okay, move. Disciple Philip Corgi. So, your connection to the church man? Yeah, so he was a teacher. Okay, yeah, you're going to go wander off. Uh, I support you. Go do good things. Cool. So I think that's a good place to start. Uh, thank you to everyone who listened to our session zero. I know this is a little longer than our normal episodes. This is how we create characters. We didn't get around to it with for werewolves since we started about six months into the campaign with those ones. Um, see us in two weeks, and we'll start the first episode of the Rounds of Pugmire. Thank you. <laughs>